This is Tales from the Pros, where business leaders and influencers share their stories of inspiration, struggles, and successes. And I'm your host, Michael Giorgio. David, how's it going, man? Priceless, man. Priceless. You You pumped. I am freaking pumped. I'm ready. I'm ready. So... I, I, I was very excited for this, for this interview, and, and uh, I know a lot of people are as well. Um, I know you have a, quite a few nicknames out there, but we'll talk about that in, in a few minutes. But uh, essentially, um, everyone, I, I have an amazing guest with me here today. His name is David Breyer. I pronounced that correctly, right? You totally pronounced that correctly. I was, I was holding my breath for a, ha- for a nanosecond going, because <laughs> only because- David Breyer. <laughs> there was a, there was ac- actually there was a guy, it was a friend, a friend I had known for eight months, and then he, then we would jump on the podcast and he goes and David Breer and I'm like yeah, no 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 it was worse Breer, I'm like yeah dude, when did I become French come on, you just you can you can imagine my last name I'm Giorgio I hate Giorgiano I don't know where the heck the N came from, uh Giorgio. But yeah, it's, it's you, crazy. You've, you're, you've, you've, well, you've, you've exceeded the Americans' tolerance for, uh, for vowel, for vowels. Yeah. I mean, that's I the thing. You, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah, absolutely. Georgia, you should, you should just, I mean, you, you, you should have a lot of fun with that. I would have a yeah. ball with that. I would, I would, I would I go, you know, okay, <laughs> so how do we, you know, I mean, it's like, how, how do you just make it absolutely insane? You know, what are the, all, you should probably, you should probably do a video just so it's like, Hi, Michael Georgio Wanna We. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like whatever. The, I mean, just literally have a video just of that. I know. Yeah, it's it's crazy. But I'm gonna see if I can uh, try to uh, meet your expectations with this introduction. Okay, so let's let's see how it goes. But uh, everyone, right I have I have David Breyer here with me, uh, an amazing guest. I'm I'm blessed and honored to have him on the show on Tales from the Pros. I'm your host, Michael Giorgio, and co-founder of Imagine Ovation. Uh, so David is uh, here with me today, and he's uh, actually a native New Yorker uh, and Google's number one ranked rebranding expert. He has four decades of branding expertise working with companies of all sizes all around the world, from startups to large global enterprises. And he is also a keynote speaker and is the best-selling author of his number one Amazon book called Brand Intervention. He has won over 330 international design awards. I'm sure there's hundreds of more coming. Uh, and has been named the presidential ambassador for global entrepreneurship. He has also received recognition by some of the world's top names in the business world, such as Damon John from Shark Tank, as you all know. Uh, I believe he was the founder of FUBU, and also Grant Cardone, which you see all over social media, known as the you know one of the top sales sales guys in the world. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about it again. Your, your nickname is, uh, the brand father amongst uh, many others, I'm sure. So David, I really appreciate you, man. Thank you for uh, being on the show with me here today. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. Totally my absolutely. pleasure. Can't wait. So David, we connected on LinkedIn and, um, <clears throat> I know there was some, some posts. I, I put this post up. Um, you know, what's funny is I had this post that I, I, I thought was really good. It was, uh, I think it was the the uh, differences between uh, branding and marketing. And I know everything gets, these words, these semantics get so convoluted and everyone just, you know, keeps throwing them out. Um, and, uh, you know, I remember I, you commented on that post and we started connecting after that. And I'm like, I did a lot of research on you. I'm like, man, I need to have this guy on the show. Um, and what I read about you was just so intriguing and uh, just all the experience you have. Um, I love marketing. I love branding. I, 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 I just love the creativity and, and, um, and in addition to that storytelling, and I know you're a storyteller yourself and we'll talk about that in this, in this, uh, this show, but, um, kind of starting from the beginning, David, can you tell us a little bit about how you really got to where you are today in, in just, you know, a few minutes, really what, what's, what, what are some of the, the pinnacle moments? How did you get to, to this place you are in this, this, this success, this level of, of where you're at right now? Um, how did it all happen? Um, I'd love to say it was all precisely by design and that <laughs> everything was exactly choreographed out, you know, timetabled out, knew where the milestones were going to be. And that would be a load of crap if I told you that. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I can, I, can, I can literally tackle that from a number of different angles, but let me, let me suffice to say this, that, you know, I have always been, I came from being an illustrator and a painter and an artist and a designer. Um, and so I came into learning about business as I started my career. Um, I got to appreciate, understand entrepreneurship a bit, et cetera, et cetera. And there was always a drive. There was always a fire that <clears throat> was, I was always going to like push what was possible. Um, <clears throat> and there are times when I look at the things that I did early on and I was like, what a, what a set of balls. I, 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 I was blind ambition, man. It was like, I'd go, well, why not? Blah, 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 blah. And I think, I think, based on what I've seen, more people, when they first get into the workforce, let go, hey, I'm going to conquer the world, right? I can do anything, right? They haven't run into any <clears throat> battles that they've lost. And so they can, I can, so what can be done? Um, if someone doesn't have that, then they're operating in a different sort of mentality than, than I was. But the entrepreneurs that I know, the creators that I knew, the ones that I aspired to, you know, to be like was like, that's, I love that. I love taking something that is ordinary and making it extraordinary. I love taking something that's bland and boring and making it exciting. I love taking something that is, um, I mean, I, first of all, just as a context, I love cooking and I love, and I love, I love music. I was a drummer when I was in my teens. So sometimes I'll use those as, as analogies. You know, you could take a normal four, four, if you know music, it's like a regular boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and you could break it up and it's like, how come you can't do it? Like, you know, it's the same, it's the same tempo, but all of a sudden you got a little more energy. And so I always loved the tension of, you know, color versus, versus black and white or space versus tightness or typographically what fonts created a certain uh, chemistry. That's, that's really been the foundation that's opened up all the various opportunities that I, that I went after. Mm-hmm. And did, did you always does that, does see that make yourself? Sense or is that like- it, yeah, no, it does. And, and it's a, listen, it's a, it's a really overloaded question. I, the reason I ask is because everyone has their own take on it, on their own story and, and, and uh, you know, getting to the point where they are today. I know David, I'm sure for you, uh, being, you know, this, this great businessman and, you know, um, you know, having, having so much experience in branding, marketing, all these things. Uh, I'm sure you've had a lot of ups and downs as well. I'm sure that you've learned from a lot of those obstacles that you've, you've gone through. You have to, right? Because you can't just be a per- perfect, you know, branding expert without having to, to go to no, 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 see, no, see no, companies no, go through their no, worst, right? No. I got, I got to stop you there. I'm the exception. I've only had successes and only had wins and every client I've worked with has only, you know, grown their company into empires. I'm the exception to the rule. I'm being sarcastic right now for those that are only listening to this and not actually seeing the expression on my face. Of course, every one of of us has had successes and failures. If anybody's telling you any other than that, they're full of it. Mm -hmm. And so, no, no, I've, I've, the worst thing that can happen is you make a mistake and you don't learn from it you know, that's the worst. That's right. So, yeah. but the thing is, is that, no, I mean, you know, and sometimes, sometimes it's, it's painful. I mean, I remember, I remember my first client that I did not, and t- I didn't have the, the correctly worded contract and I did not observe well enough myself at that point in my career that that project went on for two freaking years. Yeah. I made, I lost money. I, my whole thing was I'm going to deliver. I'm going to, until my, client's happy. Well, that's a, that's a good philosophy. It's a, it's a lousy structure because you know what? They can keep asking questions all day long. I, you know, if they if they're, if their stupidity level is really, really deep, meaning like they're just not educated, they're not informed, or they didn't think this, or they didn't think that. And, and all of a sudden it's like, all of a sudden they're, they're awakening as you're going through the process. And all of a sudden that's changed the scope of the project. I right. failed by not having a proper structure in there to to account for that possibility. Yeah. And I think this is a good segue, you know, into, into this question that I have for you is, 
uh, in all of your experience working with businesses, companies of all sizes, um, different industries, what, what are some of the main uh, branding problems, David, that you've seen and you've experienced that, 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 that you've faced with a lot of companies that they have? Um, I, you know, what are some of the, the, the biggest branding problems that you've seen? You think it does it really it's, vary they're, they're, in terms of small startup, large, or they all have matter. very similar? Okay, it doesn't matter. I mean, I will tell you, it doesn't matter. I mean, I mean, there, of course, there's a, if you get to the outer fringes of like super experienced with like really barely experienced, of course, but for, in the main, it doesn't matter what their size. Uh, basically, one of the biggest disasters is that companies are too myopic. They're looking so closely at what they're doing and that they've lost perspective on the outside world. And, and so I, one of the things that I tell clients to do is say, you, right now, I'm just going to let you know, you, my job is to get you to fall out of love with your brand. And, and, and you know what? Because if, if your baby's ugly, we need to know it, okay? I mean, I just straight up, right? If your baby's incredibly talented, if you, if you have like a freaking superhero there, but, but, you're, but you're doing it a disservice by talking about it with the same language as all the other bozos. So if you've got a bunch of, let's say very average, if you have an industry that's been around for a while and you're now coming in and you're going to disrupt it, but you're talking in the same language as everybody has been talking about for 40, 50, 60 years. I see. How does that respect your disruption? How does that let the world know, oh, by the way, we're introducing something new. You don't do that by using the language of the old. So I mean, so that's, so that's one with regard to language. The other is really being way too close proximity to a, to its own brand like you know, every like because look you've been you've been in business i've been in business one of the first things you say tell me about your company and they'll usually tell you all these wonderful things wonderful 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 and i go in for the dirt i'm like great i say thank you I say now here's what i want to know um if i went to your competitors why do i know they would pretty much tell me pretty much about them what you just told me about you at which point they go, yeah. oh, right. There's the big, there's the disconnect right there. All of a sudden they go, oh, I said, that's right. There's called this two worlds. The world that you're looking at is one the world that I'm looking at is out there. And that's the one that's going to give a damn as to how you're perceived, whether you're perceived as valuable or not valuable or overpriced or underpriced or second rate or top or top level. So, so these are the things, those are a few of the ones that are very, very common problems and, and you know <clears throat> excuse me you know it's crazy david you say that because I, i've i've dealt in my career as well i've dealt with a lot of startups even larger companies and especially um what i've noticed is in some of these um more blue collar type industries a lot of the industry industries that are, are not innovating as much um i've experienced like in construction and these contractor companies and you know they're, they're focused on the day-to-day -day and some of them very yeah. successful i mean all credit mm -hmm. due to them but when i've talked to them they don't even think about branding. Like they don't even, they're like, what do you mean? I have a logo. I'm like, okay. They're like, yeah, we just created a logo. I've been around for 25 years, but it, it's just, I'm just like, wow. Like, I mean, and some of them, I, I even wonder how they've become so successful. Some of them are, are killing it. Some not, some are killing it. I'm just like, Wow, they haven't even, they've just been around for so long and they're content, they're fine with, with, with where they're at. It's just, I, it's mind boggling, but I'm also thinking differently than them because I, I think in that way, but they're not, they're just like, hey, listen, we need to get this work done. We need to get this new client. They're not thinking about, oh, what's our brand personality? <laughs> you know, what's the character no, of our brand? No, what's the emotional connection? No, they're, yeah. they're looking at a transaction model and the bottom line is, is if they, if they happen to be a good salesperson, I mean, I've, I've known, look, I've, I've dealt with clients in New York City where they've had 100, they've been property managers for $100 million office buildings. And, you know, and it's like their whole thing was hammering out a deal, right? That's what they didn't care about brand. It was like, no, they didn't care about this thing that actually built something that was a relationship, that built something that was a longer play, that was more of the, the marathon, like, hey, you know, will people know you? Are people just going to know you on the last deal that you hammered out and the last contract that you got signed? Um, and some of those, some of those are happy with that model. But at the same time, I, mean, I took one of New York City's premier landscape designers, incredible work, right? 
the projects that he'll work on can go anywhere from $50,000 to half a million dollars, right? And the work's amazing. And when, and I remember when we looked at, when, we, when I looked at his brand, I said, your brand sucks. I said, everything that just came out of your mouth, if I looked at your, what you gave me as a card and material like that and stuff like that, I looked at that and I listened to and compared to what, because like you have to sometimes separate that stuff out because in their world, it's all, it's all mishmashed all together. <clears throat> separate it out. All of a sudden, I said, do I, would I get that? If I just looked at this, I held up his card, which was just nightmarish. I said, would I, would I get that from, from what you just said? People love my card. And I said, and I remember, I remember hearing that. He's like, hey, people love my God. I'm like, dude, this is butt ugly. Like this is, but it's not just a matter of like, pretty or ugly. It's a matter of like, it's butt ugly because it does not, one, it, it is ugly, but two, it didn't tell the story that I pay attention to every detail and will transform your ordinary area that you entertain and have your family and do whatever into an, an oasis, into a sanctuary of just awesomeness. Um, it didn't tell that story. And so that was the kind of, that's the kind of stuff that I, I love. I love taking people on that journey. And now he says, he goes, you're the only person that gets me. You're the only person that gets me. And his business has expanded as a result. He now knows what to do. He can take ownership of it. That's great. Yeah, and they, and they probably take, they have a lot of pride in it now because they know that the, the, they know the impact and effect that they have on their clients and on their community, their audience. It's crazy what, what it can do. Um, totally. A lot of us, a lot of us, they, we think so short-sighted. We're thinking about the now, and I think that's a big problem. You know, we have to yep. think about the longevity, yep. think about the long term. So, but yeah, that, that's that's awesome, man. Um, and what do you do, David, in regards to your clients from startups to larger companies? How do you guide them? What advice do you give them uh, in regards to trying to create their brand and trying to create that, develop that emotional connection? What are some of the things that you tell them during your process? Well. First, I have to recalibrate everyone because most of the time they're going, help us tell our story, help us tell our story, help us tell our story, help us tell our story. And I'm like, will you stop talking about you already? And then I just tell them, I said, first of all, let's make it perfectly clear. You are the least important person or company or part of this equation. I, I, I rein them in that way. And I say, you, I said, it's not a matter of um, are you important or not? It's a matter of the most important person needs to be your customer. Your entire brand that has to have as its nucleus, your customer, the greatest brands that you, that we all celebrate and are all envious of are built around a customer and their values. Um, and so I just re-educate them and I re-educate them and re-educate them because they think the most important thing to tell and why they've hired me is to help them tell their story. No, I've hired you to tell the right story in the right way so that it actually means something to the recipient and the individual. That's, that's what I help them do. And, and, you know, David, I love that because when I see your content on LinkedIn and I, I read it, I go through it, whether it's a post or a video or an article, whatever it may be, a lot of it, even though I know you have a great story, it's not about you. I've noticed a lot of the con t content you put out, it's always about others. And I felt guilty of myself too. I I'm, I'm trying to be more like that. But in the past, I've been more about, you know, I've been bullied in the past. I've been through that. I've been through all that, all that stuff that's made me who I am. And, you know, it's been part of that. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, yeah, people can care. Maybe the really close people care about that. But if I'm going to talk to someone who's never met you or seen you the same like you've been bullied, cool. Next post. Like, you know, it's, it's hard to find that balance. How, how do you find that balance with a company that, that has, that wants to, uh, to show what they've been through and how they got to where they are today as a company, but then make it about their customer or do, do you just take out everything about their, their story, you know, in general, do you not talk about them at all? Or is it a balance? There's, there's, a, there's a line that I have shared with clients that put it into context. And I simply tell clients, and I repeat it as often as necessary until they get it. 
the pathway to your customer's front door does not start at your front door. It starts at theirs. I simply say that. I'm like, so the pathway to your customer's front door doesn't start at your front door. It starts at theirs. What does that mean? That means the things that are most real and important to them are their ideas, their frustrations, their challenges, their aspirations, their, you know, annoyances that they put up with, whatever. That's the stuff that's most important and relevant and meaningful to them. And that's at their front door. And if we ignore that, they're always thinking about that stuff and you're trying to interrupt them to get them to say, no, look at me, look at me, look at me. And, the, and that, I, I compare that to a blind date. When you go out on a blind date and the person you're going out with, they, they want to sit down and say, hey, really excited we had a chance to get together. By the way, let me tell you all about me. <laughs> let me tell I, you all I about thought, my I haven't interests. thought about it that way. That's so good. I love it. I'm going to use that. You're right. That's true. Right? I mean, at that Unless point, the bill can't, that bill can't come fast enough. You're like, I'm out of here. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. That, that remind, yeah, it's, that's pretty cool, man. I mean, cause when I, you know, I'm, I'm engaged now to, to my amazing Jennifer, who I love very much and I'm um, trying to get married mm -hmm. next year after this whole virus, all this stuff goes away, but hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, I, will. I remember will. it will, it will. And uh, I remember we were my first, you know, first dating and all that. It was always questions about, Oh, so tell me about you. You, it wasn't me bragging and telling me about me. I would wait for her to ask. You're right. It's almost the same thing. You don't want to keep talking about yourself. And a lot of us do it. I'm, I'm guilty of it too. It's a learning lesson. It's absolutely yep. right, man. Oh, wow. So what do you do, David, when you do interact with a client or a potential client and they think they have a brand? They think they have a brand. Um, they've been around for a while. They're, they're, they're doing well. And you come and, and they, they, they do kind of have a little, uh, rep, you know, uh, more of, an awareness of saying, okay, listen, I, I think we can make it better. How do you, do you just go there and do an audit? Is it, is it something like that? How do you redefine it and, and improve it? Um, or sometimes you come in the case where they don't need improvement. Well, first we have to establish, I mean, if I'm sitting there and they're going and they're going, Hey, we're doing great. Like, well, why am I here? What, what's, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I like to ask the obvious questions. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you know, if they're, if they're kind of like, oh, sales are going great, everything's going cool, and, you know, customer, new customer acquisitions up, and blah, 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 and great, congratulations, first of all. Now, why am I here? What problem am I supposed to be helping you with if everything is fantastic? You know, I mean, so, because, you know, if, if those are two contrary facts. You've been invited in to talk to them about their brand, so, you know, and sometimes it's sometimes you end up in a in the very sorry state of sitting in the chair where you realize you're in the middle of a political in political infighting. This one is like, no, that's the way it's been being done for 20 generations and we can't stand it. That's disgusting and we hate it. And then you have the person over here is like, well, I don't see any problem. Everything's fine. I'm looking at I'm looking at the financials and I'm happy. So then you go, OK, well, you guys aren't on the same page. So that's that's uh, that's its own situation. That's. Yeah, that's a waste of time. That's a waste of time at that point. That happens um, a lot. But are, I, are you I, talking I about a different? It. Are you talking about a different? You talking about a different circumstance than that? Yeah, yeah. I'm just t talking about when they they do come to you for a need. Obviously, they have that creative person in the company, right? Um, regards. Let's put aside the political, uh, you know, internal stuff that's going on. Uh, but when you do have that person that does come to you and say, "Listen, we, I think we can improve our our brand," um, but the company is doing well you're probably not just looking at it financially. You're looking at it. Are you guys making an impact to your audience? Is there, is, is your audience and your customers, are they feeling something from you? Are they getting, do they feel, are, are you, are your customers loyal? Maybe they're not loyal because they don't feel attached to your brand. You know, maybe you're probably well, that, asking that's, them. That's definitely, definitely <laughs> a legitimate. If for example, if we're like, Hey, we're doing great. And I'm like, well, great. And, and are you, are you, you know, where are you priced medium? Are you a premium? Are you low? And it's like, Oh, low, 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 low. And then, then that's a little red flag. I go, oh, so you're just, in other words, you're just winning deals on price. Well, yeah, that's the way we always, you know, then, then you yep. have an, then you have an, an open door for a conversation or if it's kind of like, well, 
you know, we're actually sales are going like sales are going, okay, let me, maybe they're kind of like level at which, you know, let's say they're, they're level ish. They're not, you know, they're not contracting, but they're not, you know, not, it's not exploding. You go, okay, let me ask you, how's your, how's the rest of you, how are your competitors doing? Now, 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 let, now here's the thing. If, it, if it's like, well, everyone's going level. So, okay. That already tells me right there that they all are blending in. So there's no, no one's, no one's the winner. So they're all just scrambling around for crumbs. That's, that's, that's one point. There, there are such obvious ways to, to diagnose this. So that's one obvious thing. Or if they were to answer when you say, well, how's your competition doing? And they're going, well, all our competitions go, go they're all exploding, but we're remaining level. I say, well, then in other words, you're near going out of business, right? I mean, I'll just, I'll just, I'll be very blunt about it. Yeah. I'll say in other words, so you can't survive at this level, even though, it, even though you're not contracting, but if this is happening and this is going like this, that means it's going to be less people coming to you. Your mm -hmm. actual space is, even though you might be on numbers wise, your days are numbered. Now, now you have a different problem, you know? Um, or if everyone, so I mean, so it's kind of comparative. You need to look at the macro and their micro. And if you don't look at both, it's impossible to evaluate how you can best help them. Right. And, and when does the, uh, the design aspect of things come into play? Is it more in the beginning or is it later? So you're identifying the problem, all that. Absolutely. So when does that happen Absolutely. for you? Yep. It, it, the story, it, design is there to serve the brand. What is the, what's, what's the core of the brand? The brand story, the differentiator, its reason for being in the world. If, you, if you're designing in a silo independent of that, I don't consider designers doing their job if they're doing that. Then it's just, oh, let's make it look pretty. Well, we're not, we're not in the lipstick business. You know, we're just not. So that, that's the one place, because it's, it's very interesting to me, because I remember someone asked me, See, because I got in, I did, were you around when, when, you, when what, put it this way, I started my career in 1980. When did you, what year did you start your career? 2011, 2010. You're a baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Actually, right. technically 2012 right, so when I started my company, but anyways, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, so the thing is, so, so I'd been doing this for 30 plus years by the time that you just got to do it. Okay. I know. So, I here's know. The thing. so here's, so, here, so here's the thing. When I got in, I got in because of a particular designer who, based on the fact of when you got in the business, you probably wouldn't know who that designer was, but he was an amazing, amazing, very intelligent a very, very deep designer, like really not just superficial, very, and the craft that he brought to the industry changed design for at least two generations. Okay. And so <clears throat> someone recently said, who do you look up to? See, now if I was asked that in 1980, when I got through, it would be like, it would be this designer. And he inspired me. I mean, that was the foundation for my, for at least the first eight years of like everything, I kind of, in my mind, I cross-checked, would that meet up to his standard, right? Um, but then someone recently, about eight, nine months ago, asked me, who do you look up to? And I looked around in my industry, and it's not designers. I do not look up to, and there's no designer I actually, there's designers whose work I appreciate. That's no, it's just to distinguish. I appreciate their talent without question. I appreciate their taste. I appreciate their craft, but there's no, the people that I, that inspire me now are thought leaders. You know, people like a Simon Sinek, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes a Seth Godin. Um, and so those are the ones that inspire me. Those are thought leaders. I don't find, I don't know of any designers today where I go, wow which to me is a shame. I would love to find uh, you know, some that were like, wow, they really help compliment because to me, there's no way that you can design if you do not have, what am I designing for? And that, that the core is the brand story. The core is why does this brand exist in the world? The core is how is this brand differentiated from all the other brands? If I don't know that, 
I cannot navigate my way through design because I don't know what I'm designing against. I don't know what I'm designing for. And so right. that to me is, is the sequence of it. Yeah. And you were talking about, uh, before you mentioned brand story. So I know that that gets thrown around, uh, that storytelling gets thrown around a lot as well. In your, your eyes, your experience, what really is brand storytelling? How would you define that? And how powerful do you, how powerful is brand storytelling in the overall branding and marketing strategy and, and business plan? I have a very exact response to that. If you, if you know from my book, it's like I, I defined branding because it, there wasn't one agreed upon definition that everyone agreed upon of the 10,000 plus books. If you were to go on Amazon today, you'd find 10,000 plus books on the topic of branding. Crazy. But there's no yeah. agreed upon definition. So I introduced, I introduced the, it came down to four words, okay? The art of differentiation, right? Now, if you know that, branding becomes simple. If you don't know that, it becomes, well, what's the story and what's the pitch and what's the elevator pitch and what's, the, and what's, our, what's our persona and what's our I this see. and that? And then you go, what the hell? Blah, right? <laughs> um, and what's our slogan? What's our tagline? What's our mission statement? I'm like, I'm like most people I could say, look, you can take your mission statement and shove it. Because, it's, mm. because the one thing that I ask that normally puts a mission statement in its place is, uh, uh, especially if someone, if a new prospective client shows me that, I say, let me ask you something. Do any of your customers speak like that at all? And I've yet to have one single company owner, entrepreneur, uh, CEO ever say, oh, absolutely. That's how, that really reflects <laughs> the values of our client. Never. It's like, we strive to provide the pinnacle of excellence and customers. It's like, who talks like that? I know. Nobody. Yes, yeah. Not, not, not even dead people. Dead people refuse to talk that way. <laughs> and so, and so the thing is, that's why it's, that's why they're staying so still. They don't want anybody to see. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm asleep. Get, get away from me. Oh, and so, and so, but that's, so that's the kind of thing I look at. I look at in getting all those bits and pieces, brand story. You know, you can look at, you know, there, there are those. I mean, look, you, you, take a, you take a look at, you know, Donald Miller. You take a look at this one. You take a look at it. You go, okay, story brand, blah, 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 blah. And he's got his four points. And da, da, da. He has a model. He's a template. It's not a flawed template. It's not the greatest template. But I'm not a big fan of templates because of this. It's like innovations didn't result from a cookie cutter mentality. Why the hell should a brand story result from the same thing? If you know your checkpoints of what are the points it needs to cover and touch upon, you can, you can, you can navigate. It's kind of like the brilliant, it's like, it's like, that's why like you get some great artists or musician, you get someone like a, a Jimi Hendrix or a, or a Prince or, or whatever you get, whatever musician or whatever you, you go, wow, how did they play such an amazing solo? Did they, did they have a little color by number? Well, I'll do play this note, play that note. No, they understood it inside and out to such an extent that they, mm. could, they could create on top of it. And that's where you get very fluid when you get into this kind of, when you get into this kind of thing with brand story. To me, what is the role of the brand story? Brand story needs to support, we, we need to identify what is the point of differentiation. And then if we know that, we then know how we are unlike everyone else. And from there, we can start to navigate a story. We could start to navigate a story that aligns to the values of our customers and also aligns to putting out of existence the enemies of our customers. So we have the hero and the villain. And if you understand just those, those components, all of a sudden you can start to weave a story that inspires. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I took, I mean, oftentimes, you know, probably, uh, probably about half or 60% of the brands that I work on, I'll also create, I'll say, they'll say, I'll say, is anything here sacred? And they'll say, no, everything's on the, on the table. And that means name, slogan, language, everything, as well as the design. So good. Like I took a company and right now they literally, they, they just called me this morning. They are, they, they said, it's all your fault, David. I'm like, what? They said. They said, we're having to buy new refrigeration, new equipment, new this and all kind of stuff because they're in their, they're in their fourth month 
of like continuous uptrending sales through this entire crazy time period we're in there in four months, it's just up and up and up and up and up. And it's like, and they, they, they're running out of space and they're in the premium food space. Now I had to learn about the premium food space. Cause I'm not, I'm not like into like dog, dogs and having pets and stuff. So I had to learn about this. I had to learn about pet fresh, which is one leading brand Purina, probably the best known dog food brand, but also the worst quality food product that you can ever give to a dog period. <laughs> um, and so you, so you look at these, you look puppy chow and this and that, the other, and you look at all these various things, but these guys were producing fresh, uncooked, amazing food. They had had some dogs with, with cancer. They actually created these recipes. They did a research, fed it to their dogs, the, the, wow. and then their dogs actually recovered. And so they're not selling it as a cure, but they're selling it as something to help maintain the longevity of, of dog owners and dog owners are passionate about their dogs. So they, what do they, what did they have here? And this is answering your question in a, in a context yeah, no, in regards to the brand. Fantastic. Yeah. And so what happens is, is the, you know, they were Highland farms is the name of their, of their, their, their location. And they have this amazing kennel. There's no kennel like it in the world. They have like 20 Russian bloodhounds. They're unbelievable. They're gorgeous mm. dogs, white dogs. Um, anyway. So the thing is, is Highland farms is what it's called. And I, and I, and I start discussing this with them, having the initial discovery call. And I say, well, you, first of all, you think you're in the dog. I said, what business do you think you're in? So well, we're in the dog business, dog food business. I said, no, you're not. I said, you just told me all about your customers. You're in the life. You're in the life. You're a lifestyle brand. You are mm -hmm. a lifestyle brand. You have people who love a certain quality of life who also happen to have pets. You see, now I got a stage. You see, now I'm starting to formulate a story here. Yeah, and so it went from Highland Farms. You ready for the new name? Napa Fresh. Nice. Now you hear Napa. It's like, first of all, you hear Napa. It's like wine, cheese, space, rolling hills. Immediate. Napa Fresh. Food for dogs. It's all and, and, and there's wow. the, the, the art, the color, the design. So now I've got that. Now I've formulated that as the nucleus, which the name started to be, be, be the beginning of the brand story. It starts to now, now I, now I know where we are and where everyone else isn't. I've created boundaries between them and us. Now I can create a look. And then the look is so, it's so Napa, Tuscan. It's just got a beautiful vibe and coloration and everything. And they can't even keep the stuff in stock. They're, they're selling, they're so out of control. It's ridiculous. But that's what I say. The sequence is always, you got to start the nucleus of the story, which is, which reflects the values of the customer. And that, that needs to show up in all the basic places. Highland Farms sounds nice. I don't know what the hell it freaking means. Napa fresh yeah. food for dogs. I got no question. Then when you see the visuals, the visuals now just simply amplify it. It like takes mm -hmm. the innate, innate beauty of that concept. Now I can dress that. Awesome, man. Wow. Uh, I, I love the, the detail and the example that you gave. That's a, that a perfect ending to, the, to this interview. And I, I do have one more question for you, David, is I always ask this. How would you define your story in one word or in one sentence? David Breyer. All right. Well, I'm skipping over the one word option. That's off the okay. table. Okay. L let me go for one. Let me go for one sentence. Okay. A hunger and a thirst fueled by a love for story, people, design, and aesthetics. Perfect. I love it. So good, man. So, uh, David, where can everyone find you? Your website and social media? <clears throat> totally. Yeah. R rising, R-I-S-I-N-G, risingabovethenoise.com. People just go there. They can subscribe. There's, there's over 300 articles uh, and tons of visual case studies on branding there. It's just tons of stuff. Lots mm -hmm. of video. Definitely, you can catch me on YouTube, LinkedIn. Very, very active on LinkedIn. Uh, the one, the one minute Wednesdays are, are, are dropped every Wednesday. Those are dropped on YouTube and elsewhere, but um, you'll, you can find me on Instagram, you know, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. But I'd say LinkedIn, YouTube, and going to my website, risingabovethenoise.com. That'll be the thing. And everyone, 
everyone listening should buy their own copy of, of brand intervention. It's not like any, it's not like any business book you've ever seen. It's I'm not like it. any design book that you've ever seen. It's in, well, oh, you're, you're going to love this. I got to show you this. You got, you, you got, you got to check this out. Check this out. Okay. You, you'll appreciate this. First of all, that's how it's actually designed inside. Oh, I love it. Okay. Now, it's not like a regular book. It <laughs> it's no, no. And the, and the, and the last, and the last 50 pages, last 50 pages are the actual playbook. I actually show you examples. Uh, that's where the last 50 pages are. That's so good. But, be, but besides that, I have to show you my most favorite chapter, chapter 26, because it consists of two sentences, two sentences. That's all it needed because my whole goal was I refused to give you the reader put you through the pain that I've experienced. I would read 300 page business books to find 10 pages that had the good stuff. Yeah. And it was drove me nuts. So, so this is called good versus great. Okay. That's the chapter opening. Here, there, there's, there's your chapter. I'm going to read it to you. Okay. There's your chapter right there on, the, on this one side. I'm going to read this first sentence. And then this is the other side. A good brand makes us feel good about what they stand for. A great brand makes us feel good about what we stand for. That's all that it needed, man. It's like, I, I feel accomplished. I read that chapter. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. But so that, that's why the book is, it's not like, it's just, it's crazy. Look, the, the opener, here's the, here's the opener. This, this is the opening thing right there. <laughs> that's the first page. <laughs> oh, so perfect. I'm going to order this thing. I'm going to order it immediately. Uh, Amazon. Oh, oh, Everyone, oh, please oh, order oh, Brain oh, Intervention yeah. on Amazon and other bookstores. Hardcover. Only get that. Yeah. Trust me. That's production yeah. values. Hardcover. So but good. Anyway, but that's the, that's the thing. And so that's why, that's why I love this stuff. It's just a ton of fun. Cool. David, man, I, I really appreciate you, man. I'm honored and humbled to have you on the show and talk to you. And I look forward to connecting further and, and just building our relationship and uh, please everyone check out David Breyer and everything he has to offer. He's, he's wonderful, super, super amazing guy, great energy and passion behind him. So David, I really appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Absolutely, yeah. dude. Totally my pleasure, man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone. Again, my name is Michael Giorgio and I'm your host of Tales from the Pros. Thanks guys. Take care. Please subscribe to our YouTube page and also follow our social media. Uh, there are links somewhere around here. But uh, we really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for all the support. And I'm going to be giving you awesome content continuously. And we look forward to seeing you soon.